there was another interesting case that happened in 1952, uh, a case, a, a, another case involving an alien being that most certainly was looked nothing like you know what people reported later on, what people we all know, know now as the Greys. Uh, this was called a lot of you, a lot of you probably already heard about this one called the Flatwoods Monster. Um, and the United States Air Force looked into it, and it was also uh, something that Project Blue Book looked at. Um, and it's been basically treated as a joke these days. Uh, but at the time, uh, th there was a, there was a number of witnesses that saw this thing, uh, but still, and there's no explanation for it really to this day. Um, anyway, I'm going to read this article from History.com. The Flatwoods monster has not hissed at boys in the little village of Flatwoods, West Virginia, since September 12, 1952. People grin about it now and take monster souvenir money from hundreds of monster tourists every week, but it scared people plenty back then, including the eyewitnesses, six boys aged 10 to 17, a dog, and a mom. One of the boys peed his pants, said John Gibson, a high school freshman at the time who knew them well. Their dog, Ricky, ran with his tail between his legs. The encounter made the local and national news, scaring a wider swath of people. Then it prompted, prompted a United States Air Force inquiry, part of a project called Project Blue Book that dispatched a handful of investigators around the country to look into such claims. It also became a local legend, a southern spook story that defined the tiny village of less than 300 people for more than six decades. To this day, tourists come out of their way to Flatwoods, secluded in the low timbered Appalachian Hills of central West Virginia, to visit its monster museum and buy Green Monster t shirts. What they witnessed. It was dusk when they saw it. The May brothers, Ed 13 and Freddie 12, had been playing in their schoolyard with their 10-year-old friend T Tommy Heyer. After noticing a pulsing red light streak across the sky and crash on a nearby farm, the three youngsters ran to grab the May's boy's mother, then hightailed it up that hill to check out where the light had landed. A few other boys, one with a dog, showed up too. They ran back down in sheer incredible terror. Seven Braxton County residents on Saturday reported seeing a 10-foot Frankenstein-like Frankenstein -like monster in the hills above Flatwoods, a local newspaper reported afterward. A National Guard member, 17-year-old Gene Lemon, was leading the group when he saw what appeared to be a pair of bright eyes in a tree. Lemon screamed and fell backward, the news account said, when he saw a 10-foot monster with a bloody red bod a blood red body and a green face that seemed to glow. It may have had claws for hands. It was hard to tell because of the dense mist. The story made the local news, then got picked up by national radio and big papers all over the country, said Andrew Smith, who runs the Flatwoods Monster Museum and the Braxton County Convention Visitors Bureau. Mrs. May and the National Guard kid ended up going to New York to talk to CBS, Gibson said. Those people were the most scared people I've ever seen, said local newspaper publisher A. Lee Stewart in that 1952 news story. Stewart himself had marched up that hill with a shotgun after witnesses told what they saw. People don't make up that kind of story that quickly, Stewart said, that, said then. Others doubt it. State police laughed off the reports as hysteria. The newspaper story said they said the so-called monster had grown from 7 to 17 feet in just 24 hours. Gibson doubted too, though he's since sold 1,000 of his 12-inch tall ceramic green monster figurines in just the last two years at $30 a piece. I don't believe in the Easter Bunny, says Gibson, an insurance agent still working at 81. I don't believe in Santa, and I really don't believe in the Flatwood monster, but I do want to boost our community. Uh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the rest of it. You could read the rest of this. Uh, I, I will provide the link here. It gets into the atomic bomb about how people back then were afraid of the atomic bomb. I, I never buy that story. I, I don't buy that one bit. You always see, uh, like, uh, sociologists uh, claim, oh, you know, and historians try to say, well, you know, uh, back in the late 40s and 50s, there was a scare, you know, the Cold War was, you know, heating up and people were afraid of, you know, Russia and, uh, you know, the atomic bomb. And, and, and that's what caused the, those nerves cause, uh, caused people to see flying saucers. I think that's total, absolute garbage. That's just nonsense. It's like, you know, uh, in 1968, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead was released. And in the years afterward, 
uh, they would say, well, yeah, that was a response. That was basically uh, a response to the Vietnam War. That's not true. Basically, Romero was wanted to make a monster movie about zombies that eat human flesh. And he wanted to scare people and make a buck. It had nothing to do with the Vietnam War whatsoever. But people make these uh, comparisons. It's just not the case. And I think that's the case with UFOs and the Cold War. I just don't think that's... I mean, we're still seeing them today. There is no, you know, there's no Cold War. Cold War, you know, is, that, that's, that, those days are gone. But anyhow, you know, this thing has been talked about, and actually it's, it's been joked about the Flatwoods Monster, but yet you had, you know, all these kids and a, and, and a grown woman that, that had seen this thing. It was basically a 10-foot tall being that looked very strange, and they all ran away in horror. And uh, over the years, a lot of people have tried to come up with different excuses. Now, I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page here on the Flatwoods Monster because I, there's something here I want to go over. Uh, and basically, it's just interesting that it says here, the Flatwoods Monster, also known as the Braxton County Monster, Braxy, or the Phantom of Flatwoods in West Virginia folklore is an entity reported to have been sighted in the town of Flatwoods in Braxton County, West Virginia, on September 12, 1952, after a bright object crossed the night sky. Now, I just think it's interesting that they refer to this thing as folklore. It's not folklore. I mean, this was something that people saw. I mean, what's there's no folklore. There was a story. It was in newspapers at the time. This ain't something out of a fairy book uh, from the uh, mid Middle Ages or something. It's not folklore. Uh, it's something that happened and that's the a lot of debunkers like to uh, say that about ufo stories about ufo reports over the years oh it's just it's the same thing as folklore you know it's just no different than people seeing elves you know uh and, and 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 gnomes back in the 1400s you know things like that that's what they like to do they try to they try to put that all in the same alphabet soup when it really shouldn't be there but uh anyway i'm gonna one one of the conventional explanations, according to the Wikipedia page, was put forth by Joe Nickel. Uh, this is this guy's big time, big time debunker over the years. Uh, anyway, I'm going to read this part. After investigating the case in 2000, Joe Nickel of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry concluded that the bright light in the sky reported by the witnesses on September 12th was most likely a meteor, that the pulsating red light was likely an aircraft navigation or hazard beacon, and that the creature described by witnesses closely resembled an owl. Nichols suggested that witnesses' perceptions were distorted by their heightened state of anxiety. Nichols' conclusions are shared by a number of other investigators, including those of the Air Force. Of course! Of course the Air Force is going to say something like that. They had to explain it away back then. Oh, it was just an owl! So Joe Nickel investigated this in 2000. He didn't talk to any of the witnesses or anything at the time. He just made up, made this up. I mean, he had he had, he had no proof whatsoever. He wasn't there. So how does he know? So he had to make it up. He said, oh, it was an owl. The thing that they saw was 10 feet tall. And they swear it wasn't an owl. So anyway, I'm going to read more of this uh Joe Nickel conclusion. The night of, of the September 12th sighting, a meteor had been observed across three states, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. According to Nickel, three flashing red aircraft beacons were also vis visible from the area of the sightings, which could account for descriptions of a pulsating red light and red tint on the face of the supposed monster. Nickel concluded that the shape movement and sounds reported by witnesses were also consistent with the silhouette flight pattern and call of a startled barn owl perched on a tree limb leading researchers to conclude that foliage beneath the owl may have created the illusion of the lower portions of the creature described as being a pleated green skirt now again i again this is just pure height i mean he's this is just pulling this out of thin air i mean they, they, like he he wasn't there. He didn't talk to the witnesses. The witnesses said that that's not what they saw. They saw this being basically floating toward them. Researchers also concluded that the witnesses' inability to agree on whether the creature had arms, combined with May's report of it having small claw-like hands, which extended in front of it, also matched the description of a barn owl with its talons gripping a tree branch. Again, the whole problem with this whole owl thing is that it, it, it was this thing was a lot bigger than that. They said it was ten feet tall. You know, when you see an owl out in the woods, it's not going to look. It, 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 it's going to look like an owl, right? It's going to, you know, it's not going to look ten feet tall. 
You know, it doesn't matter how scared you are, you're going to know it was an owl. Anyway, according to skeptic Ryan Haupt, even though local boy Max Lockard admitted he had driven around the site hoping to see something in his Chevy truck, paranormal investigators concluded that the tracks, oily residue, and bits of a rubbery substance must have been left by the creature and not the truck. Haupt explains nausea reported by some of the witnesses as, as a symptom of as a symptom symptom consistent with hysteria and overexertion okay uh now okay i, I might agree with the part about the oily uh, about the tracks and the oily residue and the rubbery substance okay if somebody was driving around and, and okay that that that's possible i guess right uh, but again, this other stuff where people say they see something and then you have a debunker step forward. No, 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 you didn't see that. You saw an owl. That's what you saw. But no, no, but that's not what we described. Oh, no, no, but that's what it was. We, you just got confused. That's what it is. I mean, this is like almost like the same thing. Like, And the Air Force, of course, too, says these kind of things. They, 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 you know, they're the ones who initially came out with this uh, excuse. But this is like the same thing that happened in in the Rendlesham Forest incident in 1980 in England, where you know multiple witnesses, you know, at an army base, a United States Army base in 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 England, saw an object. Actually, three of the guys actually saw this object, this triangular object with hieroglyphic writing on it, land on the ground. But then you had the bunkers, and, and of course, first the Air Force step forward and say, no, 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 that was light. You saw lights from a, a nearby lighthouse, right? And then, of course, the debunkers, they got on that train, too, and say, oh, yeah, that's all it was. It was they saw lights shining through the tree from this nearby lighthouse. But see, the one thing that they don't they never said at the time is that actually th that was impossible because where they, for one thing, <laughs> there were three witnesses that actually saw the thing land on the ground. One of the witnesses actually touched it. Right, and actually wrote down the the hieroglyphics, uh, hieroglyphics on on a piece of paper, right? And 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 not only that, but the 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 light the light from the lighthouse it would have been impossible to get there because there was a, a piece of metal on the back of it, so the light wouldn't shine in toward the town only at sea. They don't talk about that part though, and this is like the same kind of case here with the Flatwoods monster. Like again, nobody proved anything one way or the other but these witnesses said they said they saw this you know huge humanoid creature that again like we were just talking about earlier looked nothing at all like the gray beings that people are used to you know that most people who run into a uh, uh humanoids see uh most people who are abducted by aliens encounter i mean of course there's other things out there we talk about that too like the nordics but again the nordics who knows uh could uh, they could be hybrids they could be you know half human half alien who knows really what they are now i know there's a lot of people out there that claim to know everything they think that there's you know uh like 50 they they, they they know for sure that there's 50 or 60 different sorts of alien beings out there i, I don't know how anybody knows any of that i don't know how any, anybody could come to a number uh really uh, because there's just so many different accounts and so many different stories we really don't know what's going on it's a giant mystery and again, I really believe that uh, one of the things we got with this mystery, one of the problems is that uh, be, be, the, the government does not want to release this information. Governments of the world don't want to release this information because it would cause too much confusion. Uh, it's, it, there's confusion enough. They, they don't have all the answers. The governments themselves don't have all the answers. So if they provide, if they give what they do have, then, then people are going to say, well, that's incomplete. Well, you don't know anything else? That's it? Right, so, so that could be one of the main reasons for the uh, for the, the, the cover up that's been going on for decades now. But anyway, uh, th there are other beings out there. I guess that's the point of all of this: is that there are other things out there. At least I don't know about lately, right? Uh, I really haven't heard a lot lately. I mean, the only thing we really know about uh, for sure is that Greys have been coming here for a long time, along with their uh, apparent uh, bosses, the Praying Mantis, uh, and also uh, sometimes it seems like there's uh, reptilian-style aliens hanging out with them too. Uh, that's all we really know. Most people seem to experience those beings uh, most people uh who's claimed to be abducted that's what they see and then there's these little blue beings too that uh, apparently show up sometimes for some people and, and but they're all again it's all part of this gray group and you wonder like so what's going on what does this all mean like okay if there's all different beings coming here you know why is it why are these grays the dominant ones i mean did they push everyone up 
all the other races away or are they working together somehow is it, it who, who knows i mean we just don't know but the fact is is that there's been all kinds of reports throughout the decades and we just don't have the answers